Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Saturday, June 8th, around 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Take a look at the models. Here is the WSA Enlil Spiral showing that M9 solar flare headed our way to make direct contact with Earth tomorrow night. G2 geomagnetic storm is in the forecast. Keep calm. It's boom time once again. The end of El Nino might make the weather even more extreme. The shift from El Nino to La Nina will see temperatures drop. But when one weather system swings to the other, summers tend to be hotter than average, meaning 2024 could be even warmer and wilder than last year. Buckle up. Colorado weather, severe storms bring threat of golf ball size hail, heavy rain, and damaging winds. The greatest threat of severe weather hovers over the plains eastward of Greeley. And severe weather continues with a flood threat in the plains with record heat in Florida. There were more than 130 storms reported Friday, most in Kansas and Nebraska. Fresno Fire Department is seeking a man that has been spotted at eight blazes, including the massive grass fire that just made its way across the state. Have you seen him? He is probably the arsonist responsible for the climate change. Speaking of climate change, here is the U.S. drought situation. Not a lick of drought for the entire state of California. Most of Nevada is in zero drought. The only state in a bad way looks like it's going to be New Mexico and East Texas. New Mexico, the worst hit with the most severe drought down here near Ransom in Alamogordo. Uh, this severe drought here in Kansas may be coming to an end thanks to precipitation in a big way. Heat continues in the southwest U.S., severe thunderstorms in the central U.S., Dangerously hot conditions will continue across portions of the interior California, the Great Basin, and the Southwest through Saturday. With some relief expected Sunday, the temperatures are supposed to drop here 20 degrees by Monday. Severe weather, mainly hail and wind, flash flood potential will extend from the central high plains through southern Kansas into the middle Mississippi and lower Ohio valleys. Click on your county for more info. A quick look at the GFS model shows where that severe weather threat is right now up in northeastern Colorado, just entering Nebraska. In the next three hours, an explosion over Kansas will occur as it moves east into Missouri overnight and basically fizzles out by morning. A secondary line of storms here lining up for the end of the weekend could keep it spicy for some time to come. We'll just move the models through here. Nothing that spectacular happening on the model. If we go to precipitation and moisture and look at total accumulated precipitation, you're going to see that any drought in Florida will be coming to an end, as well as Kansas, where upwards of six to seven inches of rain are expected to fall through the third week of June. And that is going to be a June boom for the drought in Kansas. Very little moisture coming to East Texas or Southern New Mexico. So that's bad news for those guys. Seismic update. Basically no earthquakes anywhere on Earth. Look at that. Just about a dozen or so worldwide above 2.5 magnitude. All is quiet across the globe. As we change over to worldwide volcano news. For Saturday, June 8th, we've got Fuego to 15,000 feet, San Cristobal, volcanic ash today, Marapi volcano puffing to 11,000, Liwa to 10, Sabancaya, 22,000 foot puff, Semaru to 15, Popo to 23,000 foot today, Sabancaya to 24,000, Liwa Tobi, explosive activity continues there with an ash plume that rose up to an estimated 10,000 feet. We've also got Liwa Tobi. We just said that 10,000. Fuego to 15. Semaru to 15. Merapi to 11. And that wraps it up. Ducono to 8 for worldwide volcano news for the day. Quick jump over to space weather. This M flare, the M 9.7. Uh, no one thought that there was a coronal mass ejection, but indeed there was, and a significant one at that. It sent us into 
Uh, Proton Storm S2 just for a moment and has now dropping back down into S1, which is good news. Take a look and let's pull this up. We're going to take a quick look here at Lasco C2 and you're going to watch uh, that radiation storm hit the satellites right after the boom. So boom, there's the shot, there's the snowstorm. That is the radiation which is now hitting Earth. Quite a spectacular flare. Now because of the radiation storm on the instruments which is uh, directly facing Earth there, uh, we could be seeing a coronal mass ejection hitting us in just another 12 hours, and that is in fact what the WSA Enlil has. Quite a big plasma. Look at that black spot there, literally getting very close to clipping Earth. Earth is the green ball here. And so we could see, be seeing some pretty spicy aurora tomorrow night. So stay tuned for more updates as the aurora watch is looking fantastic. Let's talk about that snowstorm. It was underway as energetic particles bombarded the Lasco detectors on board the SOHO spacecraft. It should be noted that the strong S3 radiation storm threshold was touched just for a second. Uh, while we wait a CME tracking model, it does appear that the edge of this plasma cloud is headed in our direction. In fact, it is. I just showed you the model. And what is the detailed three-day geomagnetic forecast? It's showing a six-hour G2 geomagnetic storm, potentially an 18-hour geomagnetic storm in totality above G1. So there we go. Could be in for some spectacular aurora tomorrow. Scientists are working on a desperate plan to refreeze the Arctic. The only problem is the Arctic is already frozen. So there's that. The thousand-year-old mystery of the giant snake found in drawlings across the world, especially out here in the desert southwest, where these snake motifs represent a creation myth. But they are found on every continent, and Africa is no different, nor is Italy, Western Australia, or even the French Dordogne region. If this interests you, I will leave you links to this article below. Leah and I may be covering this on an upcoming radio show over at Revolution Radio. And the tallest waterfall in China is being fed by a pipe at the top. A hiker went to see the source of this waterfall and got a big surprise when he saw a pipe coming out of the top of the mountain. Now, according to Chinese authorities, they say that only in the drier months do they turn the water on the pipe because they don't want to upset tourists that travel long distances to see, well, the country's highest waterfall, which may not even exist at all, naturally. <laughs> What a fraud. You want to know who's not a fraud? Leah and I, when we have our scientific discussions over at Magnetic Reversal News, they are well-received, well-shared, and many people appreciate the work we do over there. Tonight is going to be no different, where we will discuss the ongoing magnetic field reversal of the Earth, mass extinctions, evolutionary leaps, and what you have to be prepared for to survive and thrive in the coming times. One thing you can do to hedge your bets and get peace of mind is to support our affiliate, the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers, where you get the cheapest seeds on earth, all heirloom vegetable seeds, open pollinated, two bucks a pack. Use coupon code ORP2024 for an additional 10% off and free U.S. shipping on seed orders over 25 bucks. Go get them. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. We are shadow banned and it's up to you to help our channel grow. You can also become a Patreon, support the work we do and watch all of our podcasts in one place, commercial free. You can always get the seeds. We'll see you in a minute over at Magnetic Reversal News. And that is a boom to knowledge. Be safe. We love you. Mm -hmm.